each table should have a handout. Uh, on one side, it says uh, parish survey goals and our hope for a new rector. And the back side has a graph uh, chart, which I will explain in a few minutes when we get to that. Hello, can you hear me? Boy, isn't it great to be back together again? Thank you for the food. Thank you everybody for set up and for your contributions to it. Uh, each table also has a couple of little cards. Let's begin this thing in a nice official style as we have begun all of our meetings of uh, the profile committee and I assume the discernment committee, we have the parish prayer. Can we take one moment and pray this together? Let us pray. Almighty God, give everybody a perfect gift. Look graciously on your own church and so God Questionnaire. Uh, we had actually been meeting for a couple of months before that. The profile committee has actually been working since November, putting together all the questions that were in that survey. We wrestled, not literally, but quite, quite figuratively, we wrestled with a lot of the questions in there. Questions were added and dropped because we thought one or another got at some issue that we thought needed to be checked. Uh, the response was, frankly, overwhelming. Um, I was hoping that we would get maybe 70, 80% response. I think we had 100% response. We had 200 responses, actually 201 responses, which I think is, correct me if I'm wrong, I think that's actually a little more than the average Sunday attendance. So to me, that says, we got a tremendous response. I think we have a very solid feel for what the people of St. Paul's um, are thinking. Um, we have gone through the search, the, 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 the uh, self-study committee has gone through all of those questionnaires. Uh, we had 13 open-ended questions where you were asked to comment on something or to add your thoughts, your observations. We had 13 of those, out of which we got 1,321 individual responses. <laughs> and I remember the night that uh, the committee sat down uh, in this room and we said, what in the world do we do? <laughs> and then add to that, we had had three or four uh, parish-wide forums similar to this. Uh, we met with almost every small group in the church. Um, we have met individually with some people who wanted a follow-up response. We even went to the Highlands and interviewed people there. Uh, we have tried very hard to get your response, your feedback, you tell us, what you think about St. Paul's Church. And we have taken that mountain of data and we've compressed it into one slide. Into one slide. <laughs> <laughs> you can go home.
some of the open uh, text comment, uh, we, uh, we've had great fun with uh, some of the, you are a very literate group of people. <laughs> very literate. Um, I had a lot of fun uh, looking at people's comments. Some of them were very serious and uh, to be honest with you, some I, I, I heard anger uh, in some of those responses. Uh, a lot of suggestions, thoughts, insights, uh, all kinds of stuff. We have, uh, during your supper uh, time here, uh, Paul had prepared a, 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 a sort of a run through loop of uh, your some of the quotes that we've selected just because we thought, well, this is sort of representative. Uh, uh, of, of different feelings in the church. Some of them are negative, some of them are positive, and so forth. We've done the same uh, for the rest of this presentation, which we will get into in a minute. Um, so please, uh, number one, do not feel offended if your priceless quote didn't get in, uh, <laughs> because there were many. Uh, it, was, it was very hard to choose, it really was. Um, uh, we have tried to maintain confidentiality. You may recognize the uh, occasional voice in some of these. If so, don't shout it out. Uh, unless you want to say, oh, I wrote that. You know, that's up to you. Um, but we have selected um, from there because we think that it will help uh, in kind of fleshing out uh, the data itself. So what we've done here, we've got uh, a, we've got a slideshow presentation for you. And what we intend to do with all of this is uh, basically three things. The third one, depending on whether we have time. First thing we want to do is take a half a dozen slides to just go through some of the raw statistical stuff that came out of the survey of uh, who we are, basically. Um, what some of the demographic characteristics of St. Paul's are, what some of our parish values are. Uh, then we devote the bulk of this evening to, um, to a list of the qualities that we are looking for in a rector uh, for this church um, and to, to explain to you how we came up with the qualities that are shown in there. You all have, we, we did a handout, so you all have in front of you uh, a sheet of paper. You should have in front of you a sheet of paper uh, at the top that lists parish goals. Then there's a section halfway down that talks about qualities we would like to see in the next rector. We'll get to that in a minute. And then if time permits, if time permits, Paul and I thought that there are some things we call issues. Uh, that came out during the course of the survey that don't really directly affect uh, who we choose for a rector, but they are parish-wide issues, things like parish debt, welcoming, communications, and stuff like that. So if time permits, we will get into that section. But the bulk of what we're going to do tonight is taking a look at who we are as a parish and what we would like to see in the qualities we'd like to see in the next rector and how we came up with those qualities. So why don't we, why don't we move on here? There's the summary of what we're going to do, so you can even move beyond that. We're really ripping right along here. Uh, who are we? This came out of the, uh, out of the survey. 63% female, 37% other. 59% uh, of us are over 65. 63% um, female, that's right about the typical uh, Episcopal Church, actually. I got some, uh, some uh, statistical data from uh, the Episcopal Church in the United States of America, I think it's currently called, and, uh, and the median Episcopal Church in America is 60% female, so we have 3% more females than typical. I don't know about the males. Anyhow, 59% um, of our parish is over the age of 65, in the ICUSA population, the Episcopal Church in the United States of America, the average mean is 30%. 30%. So we are, and in fact, for the US as a whole, uh, 
13% of the population is over, uh, is over 65. So we are somewhat heavily weighted toward people who are over 65. Only 16% are under 40, and all but 2% of that is kids. So we have, uh, go on to the next chart if we could, a uh, little graph here, we'll put it pictorially, 59% of the parish is 65 or over. The maroon one on the lower left corner, 25%, that's middle age. That's pretty much family side, the family formations and stuff. The little lemon pie slice there, that's their kids. And that 2% is the current structure of the population at St. Paul's. So when we talk about how we need to welcome people, we need to improve, we need to grow this church, I think that's where we need to grow, personally. It looks kind of like we need to aim for that. I don't think it's necessarily bad to have older people, has been pointed out to us. <laughs> they, do, they contribute money. That's, that's, they contribute money. That's here's, here's, a, here's, a, here's an interesting thing that did not make it into a slide. Uh, I was trying to find an opening page of our parish profile tonight, and believe it or not, I was not able to find it, but I believe we introduced ourselves to a prospective candidates as a vibrant, uh, alive, spiritually alive uh, Episcopal Church. Do you know that nationwide, again, looking at the ECUSA data, only 24% of Episcopal churches consider themselves spiritually vibrant. 24%. I think we, uh, we do win on that one. I think we're spiritually vibrant. Uh, who we are. We're pretty involved. We're pretty involved. 80% of us come every week or almost every week. This is an interesting one here. 33% of the people in this place consider themselves very involved. And 52% consider themselves moderately involved. That will come back to haunt us a little bit later in this slide, but it's a very interesting one. 85% of the people in this place think that they're pretty involved. It's an interesting number. Let's take a look at the next slide. The kids. Uh, by the count that, remember that little thing that said, if you're, if there are more than one family members filling this thing out, please make sure that only one person responds. So I don't think we're double counting, but by the count that I received through the parish uh, survey, we have 18 kids currently in our parish who are living at home, 17 years old or younger. That is 9% of the average Sunday attendance, right? That would be 9%. That's not bad. It looks better than uh, <coughs> the first statistic we were talking about. Um, OK. So who are we? Uh, what's really important to the people of St. Paul's? Um, there are a number of ways that you could look at trying to determine what our parish values are. Uh, one quick and easy way is to take a look at parish goals that I believe were pretty much prepared by the vestry. I think it's a vestry thing, and that's listed on that handout that I gave you. We didn't want to get into reading information on the slide, but you have in front of you uh, a listing of parish goals. You can take a look at that. Another way to look at who we are at St. Paul's is how we allocate our money. Why don't we take a look at that one? Um, this is uh, this is a what they call a narrative budget. Uh, we did it last year, and we've done it for purposes of the, of the profile. Um, at the suggestion, incidentally, this came directly from one of our meetings with a group, actually, of retired clergy. And they said, you really should have a narrative budget. Priests love to see a narrative budget. So there it is. We spend about 30% of our budget on worship, 27% on Christian education and formation, 
24% on basically outreach, I guess, mm -hmm. meeting our neighbors' needs, which includes our diocesan assessment, and 12% on strengthening our community, so uh, community of faith. And so that's another way of looking at what's valuable to this, what our values are. Um, outreach, in this case, would be about 24% of our parish budget, which is pretty good. I would say we, we feel we have a commitment to outreach in this parish, and that, to some extent, does talk to that issue. What caught my attention uh, was how we responded to some of the questions in the parish survey. And the question here is, which sections of the survey drew the most passionate responses? I noticed when I was going through the survey, it's very interesting. You look at some of these sections and people say, ah, oh, this is very important, this is very, really important. And you get to other sections and, the, and you notice a drop off where people say, yeah, well, this is pretty important. This is okay, yeah, I'm sober. So I went through and I took a look at each one of the, I think there's like, seven sections to the survey, uh, like parish administration, parish life, Christian ed, outreach, stewardship. There were seven of these sections, and I counted how many responses did we get that were marked extremely important. Oh, you're getting ahead of me on that one there, but that, on the back side of that handout that I gave you is a chart. I gotta get the chart myself. I have a copy of it here. This little chart right here, it's called Percentage of Parish Survey Responses Marked Extremely Important. Parish Administration. 44% of the responses were marked, this is extremely important. Parish life, 39% of them are marked extremely important. Christian ed, 34%. Worship, 24%. I would have thought worship would be number one. I mean, I'm not criticizing, it's just interesting. Worship is down there, 24% of the responses were marked extremely urgent. And that includes the music that we do, it includes the type of liturgy that we have. Uh, uh, you know, and it's interesting that it didn't, these responses to the worship section did not generate the level of passion that parish administration did. Wow. Outreach, 23%. Well, relations with the diocese were on the bottom. Uh, people, uh, it's interesting. I mean, it says that people aren't that hot about stuff with the diocese and with other churches. It's just interesting. I don't I don't know. It just uh, to me it suggests and I, you know, maybe we can open this up to some discussion later on, but to me it suggests perhaps a, sort of an inward somewhat inward looking parish. I'm not sure. All of our our intensity of emotion is tied up with internal stuff. Parish administration incidentally the, all that heat is primarily over communication. Communication is a very big issue in this parish. A lot of the intensity uh, of that response was over communication. When you look at, I think most everybody hopefully has received a copy of the actual results from the survey. When you look at the parish administration section in there, and look at the kinds of responses that are there. The heated responses primarily have to do with communication. Very big issue in this parish. Moving right on, now, I'm going to introduce you to the famous question number 81. This is a, gonna be a little recurring theme for tonight, so get familiar with it, because it's gonna crop up a few times. Question number 81, was that annoying little question where we listed about 20 different characteristics or traits that you might look for in a, in a, in a, in a rector. And we said, okay, and tell us five or six 
traits that to you are really important. And this is how it came out. Preaching was number one. 67% of the respondents named preaching as one of the five or six most important things. 67% of the people thought that was one of the top five concerns that they had for an incoming rector. Critical care ministry, 59% of the responses were uh, for that one. I want to make sure everybody understands how to read this chart because we're going to come back to it a few times. Um, anyhow, there they are ranked in what you told us was, in your mind, the most important things to look for in next chapter. The top five goes down through church growth and development, and then we go on with the next five are youth work, administration, liturgy, called by God, and music. Called by God. <laughs> Called by God? What? Why do we put that into there? Well, let's take a look at the next uh, let's take a look at the next uh, slide. The first quality shown on the list of on the list of qualities that we're looking for in the parish profile, which is different from the list of ten qualities that you saw a moment ago. We have a list of qualities that we have put into our parish profile. We say, we hope our next rector will be a person who, in no particular order, but it so happens, number one is, leads from a place of empathy and heartfelt prayer. I'm going to get back to the prayer in a second, because I'd like Paul to take the stage for just a second on leads. You're going to find out. <laughs> the leadership really was a lot of discussion in our group, and it, it is not an easy thing to answer. You'll see it here. We've got directive or inclusive. And uh, we talked about things, like where I came from, it was called walk-around management, where you had a rector who was involved and knew about every group that was going on, but not not in their face. I mean, and so this is, and we had, we don't know what we got, what we really want on this. To be honest, is that do because we had it from both, had both kind of input from various people. Somebody, somebody want a lot of director who's really involved actively in part of every group. And then I think if you notice on one of the quotes that was on the last slideshow, somebody noted, well, that's a good way to burn, burn out a record. <laughs> If he's involved in every single group, and they said, we can't do that. We, we've got very good uh, lay, lay people here. But at the same time, and Tom Wright alluded to it in the, uh, the slide about two back, and in, it was in one of the, um, on the loop, was they're very concerned that they want the record to be personally involved in issues of critical care. And this was in no, no disrespect to anything affecting uh, lay pastoral visitors, but we had several people say, when it's a very critical time, I want a person with a caller there. The call. The caller. The caller. That's it? No. The caller. So anyway, we had, this has been a thing that I think as the discernment committee is working this thing, but we looked at, you know, do we want a director who's very directive or an inclusive or a more subtle approach? So it's a hard issue to deal with. Stop moving. Stop moving. <laughs> We, we didn't actually ask, we, we didn't actually ask the question, would you like a leader? I mean, everybody assumes that the rector is going to lead, you know, he's going to lead. In fact, you know, uh, it's so basic that we didn't know how to ask that. So, a quick answer to Sarah's question, where did you get this from? Well, we didn't ask you if you want a leader. We sort of assume that that's what the rector does. But the style of leadership is absolutely critical. To, to my mind, to my mind, this is probably, next to being called by God, I'll get back to that in a second, next to being called by God is probably the most important thing. I was telling you about some statistics from the Episcopal Church of the United States of America. Leadership style, 
leadership style, according to Ikusa, leadership style is a source, was a source of conflict, conflict in 46% of the parishes in the United States over the last five years. Leadership style is a source of conflict in 46% of the parishes in the Akusa over the last five years. So who you get for a rector, do you want somebody who's going to direct everything? Do you want somebody who's going to be collegial? Uh, honestly, some people in the survey were clearly uh, uh, anxious to move away from what they considered a non-involvement. Uh, what do you want? We, we, don't, we don't really know. I don't know, but it's something that maybe we need to think about as a parish. 46% um, of the parishes in the last five years, conflict. Leads from a place of empathy and heartfelt prayer. There we go. Now, there again, where did we get heartfelt prayer? Well, uh, if you go back to that question 81, you want to move on to the next slide, I guess. Uh, the, the ranked number nine in, in, in order of uh, your response of what you consider to be important was called by God to the ordained ministry as opposed to a career choice. I was the person who put that question into the questionnaire. And we had a discussion. On um, the discussion, it was. Uh, we ended up as friends, uh, <laughs> still talking to each other, but the general sense was, why in the world do you have to put that into the questionnaire? Of course, he's a priest, he's called by God, he wouldn't be a priest if he were called by God. I'll bet there are other people in this room besides me who know ordained priests who are there because it's a nice job, it's got good benefits. You get adulation. I have known priests like that. I have personally known priests who, who were in the ministry because that was a good career choice. I think that's critical. And if the person who you call for a priest doesn't really believe that God can speak to him or in some way make his desires for this place known, then you're just being run like any other business. So, heartfelt prayer, I think, is critically important. That's where we got that from. Otherwise, uh, we didn't ask you about whether you want a leader or not. We did assume that. Um, looking back on your list of the qualities we hope to find in a new rector, You'll see a second one listed there again in no particular order. No particular order, but the second one listed says visits and offers support to parishioners who are critically ill, in crisis. I've forgotten now exactly how it's worded. Where did that come from? <clears throat> Pastoral care. Questions 24 and 25. We asked, how important is it to you that the priest be available on a regular basis? And in question 24, 68% of the people said it was extremely important. 68% said it was extremely important or important. And how important is it to you, question 25, how important is it to you that the priest be available in time of crisis? 95% said extremely important or important. So we thought that would be important. That's how we got that statement into the profile as one of the qualities we would like to see in a rector. We think it's pretty important that this person exhibit pastoral care. Go on to the next slide. There is the, there is the, I think you all have the parish uh, survey, so there is the breakdown of answer to questions 24 and 25. Line. Question 40. Visits and offers support to parishioners. Oh, here is one where he said, indicate the quality of parish life that 
most important to you, uh, quality of parish life. And the second most important to everybody was question number 25, how important is it that pastoral care by clergy uh, be available? And uh, so that was ranked the second most important uh, feature of parish life. So again, pastoral care, that's where that comes Tom, from. Tom? Yes? That had 158 responses, so everybody didn't answer every question. Is that, that, is cor that is correct. Some people would skip questions for one reason or another. Uh, I don't know. Again, visits and offers support. There is question 81, everybody. Are you tuned in? Question 81 said, list what you think are the most important traits or characteristics uh, most important to St. Paul's. And number two, listed number two, besides preaching, number two was critical care, and number four was pastoral care. So those are really, really big issues. Uh, we have a couple of good quotes, right? I love this one. Right or wrong? Clergy equals God in times of severe need. Okay. When it comes to crisis, I think clergy needs to reach out to the parishioners. After that, the lay people can follow up if appropriate. And then there's another one on the next slide. I love this. Pastoral care by lay people. Okay. As long as the clergy visits first. I don't want a bunch of lay people. I want the priest. <laughs> Actors should be in touch. I'm sorry, I love these quotes. <laughs> Fortunately, it is the announce. Uh, fosters honest and transparent communication. Again, if you look back at that handout that you got, the parish goals are at the top, and the little there's a little subsection there called um, qualities we would like to see in, uh, in a rector. I think the third one down says, fosters honest and transparent communication. There again, communication is a critical issue in this parish. Um, and uh, uh, can we go back to that other slide there? Here is where we got that notion that, that uh, honest and transparent communication is important. Um, question 70 said, how important is it to you that the rector and vestry maintain open communication with the congregation, and 75% of the people said, it's pretty important. So we thought, okay, I guess that's one of the qualities we're looking for. Then we got some more quotes for this. Communication is key to everything. Okay, moving right along. Connects with children. Uh, again, if you look at your little handout there, that second group of qualities, qualities we would like to see in the rector. Uh, third or fourth one down there, fourth one I guess it is. Fifth one. Fifth one. So fifth one down says we would like uh, someone who connects with children. Where did we get that one from? Uh, well, in question 34 of the survey, we said, how important is it to you that the needs of teenagers be addressed through youth activities and so forth, in addition to whatever we're doing already? 52% said it's extremely important. And another 43% said it's important. So that's 95% of the people thought uh, that the needs of kids should be addressed. So. We put down that one of the qualities that we would like to see in our next rector is connects with children. That's where it comes from. Uh, go on to the next one. Again, the famous question 81. There it is again. Number six in the rank on question 81, the most important traits. Youth work was uh, number, number six. 38% of you, 38% of you listed this as one of the top five or six concerns. That says it's pretty important. Uh, connects with children. Here's some more quotes. Um, nice little com compliment for the J2A program. I wonder if this one. 
of us written by a teenager actually maybe we could lose teens BC they are because they are not interested that's not my abbreviation that's whoever wrote it because they are not interested okay. um, so another going back to your little handout sheet again the qualities that we're looking for we would like our next rector to exhibit the following qualities one of them is that he should he or she should be passionate about and encourage lay ministry. Where did we get that one from? Well, question 28, we said, how important is it to you that opportunities for lay ministry be encouraged and supported? 42% of you said it was extremely important. That's where that comes from. That's where we got the idea that lay ministry is probably pretty important. Um, and in question 40, we said, Please indicate the quality of parish life. This is in the parish life section. List the quality that is most important to you. And enter the question number. So people identify question number 28 uh, provides opportunities for lay ministry as the fourth most important uh, aspect of parish life to them. Uh, that's where, so anyhow, that's where we get the notion that Lay ministry should be supported. Lay ministry is one of the one of the one of the defining characteristics of St. Paul's. For whatever we got a lot of griping and grousing about uh, past uh, administration in this church. Uh, some people feel that there was too much involvement uh, by the. Rector. Some people feel there wasn't enough involvement by the rector. Whatever it is, uh, lay ministry has developed in this parish, and it is actually one of the great features, I think, of St. Paul's. There you go, lay pastoral visitors. Good job. Preaches with clarity and relates the gospel to our daily lives. Where does that come from? Okay, there it is. Question number, question uh, number eighty-one. Once again, where we asked you to list what five or six qualities of a rector would be most important to you. Preaching came out as number one. Uh, I'm not sure that it really is number one, but that's how everybody rated it. I think pastoral care, actually, is number one, but anyhow, um, oh yeah, question 80, question 80 is where we said, do you have, what, 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 what things do you not like about St. Paul's or need improvement? Here's one. Preaches with clarity and relates the gospel to our daily lives. Now, what do you mean when you say you relate the gospel to your daily life? Well, we asked, uh, do you think that sermons should, how important is it to you that sermons basically should concentrate on spiritual growth? In one question. The next question we said, how important is it to you that sermons should concentrate on social issues? You go to some churches. Uh, all you hear is one or the other. Uh, we wanted to find out uh, if there was a, a, a bias toward one thing or the other in this parish. I think that there is a bias uh, here toward sermons that tend to relate a little bit more to spiritual growth than to social issues. 31% of you marked it as extremely important for spiritual growth. Uh, for sermons that concentrate on social issues, only 13% so it was extremely important. Um, so, that's where that comes from. Small groups encourages and inspires others in the development of a deeper spiritual life. 
I think that came out of our questions about small groups. Um, frankly, there was we didn't we didn't ask you directly. Do you want somebody who encourages and inspires you to a deeper spiritual life? We all assume it, <laughs> but uh, we thought we'd find out. Uh, one way to find out is how you feel about small groups. And um, when we said, indicate the quality or characteristic of parish life that is most important to you, small groups came out as a number three, uh, as people's greatest concern. Um, so, I think we can move on to the next one. Uh, will help us change gradually to remain relevant in today's world. And that gets back to the issue of leadership. Um, how, do we, how, do we want, how do we want to be that, if you will? Um, do you want somebody to come in here and say, okay, we're, we're doing it. I don't know. Um, or do you want somebody who, who makes a more of a point of gathering everybody in and getting a feel for where we as a parish want to go. A critical issue, uh, in my mind, of what kind of a person we want to lead this church. Um, again, getting back to some of the data from the Episcopal Church of the USA, 69% uh, of clergy uh, report that they spend what they call a great deal of time developing and promoting a vision and purpose for the parish. Um, so it's a big part of the rector's job to help us <coughs> gradually change, to remain relevant. The only issue is what kind of help do we want? Um, This one I can divulge one little detail to you. It actually comes from a clergy person. So, to my mind, it has some weight. Supports our commitment to outreach. Confession time. This is confession time here. When we met with the diocese, uh, the diocesan leadership, they said, there are a couple things you need um, in your list of qualities for a new record that we're not really seeing. And the observation was that St. Paul's actually has a, a very strong outreach program, and you want to make sure that the person who comes in here will support that outreach program. This quality right here supports our commitment to outreach did not come out of the survey directly. It came with a little guidance from the diocese. Um, but anyhow, um, we did ask you, uh, in question 56, we said, uh, how important is it to you that the parish minister to the special needs of the wider community? 23% uh, thought it was extremely important. 52% uh, thought it was important. So there is justification for it, aside from the obvious that we do have a very strong outreach program in this church, and I think it was a worthy addition to the list of traits and qualities we would like to see in our next rector, even though we didn't directly ask you that. And there was one more little addition that the diocese said you should have in your list of qualities. Of, uh, and and we, we actually spent a fair amount of time trying to figure out how to word 
this particular quality, and we decided. I think the final wording is that the candidate approaches challenges with optimism and a sense of humor. That was a good addition, so okay. Uh, we didn't ask you if you would like to have a rector who approaches things with optimism and a sense of humor, but it was suggested by the diocese, and uh, it's a good suggestion, so it made it to that list. Uh, we have no statistical, no statistical justification for it. Um, it was just a recommendation, and I think we said, okay, you got it. So the new rector will have a sense of humor, we hope. Um, those qualities that you have listed uh, in front of you, um, again, uh, they happen to be in no particular order. So, the new rector may, or it, it, humor may be the first most important part of that person's quality, I don't know. Uh, the new rector would be amazing if the new rector reflected all of those, but what we're hoping out of all of this is to get someone who embodies at least the, the bulk of those qualities. So anyhow, that's where we got them. And you'll notice, nowhere in the list of qualities that we would like to see does it say anything about music, liturgy, or theology. These didn't come out that hot. People weren't that interested in them. I don't know. I think, I don't know. Uh, music came out as number 10, I think. On question 81, I think music was number 10. So, uh, you know, some percentage of people think uh, music is one of the most important qualities that we should look for in a new rector. But we didn't hear much about it. Uh, we've, we saw a lot of comments that said music at St. Paul's is great. Likewise, liturgy. I think it's like called by God. Well, that's what they do. They do liturgy. I don't know. Uh, they figure, well, that's what priests do. So, and uh, theology didn't. Not one of them. We just assume it, I guess. I don't know. And I think that's it. That's it for the list of qualities. Now, uh, yes. we, got a, we got a couple questions. That's the end of the section on how we came up with what we did uh, in terms of what we're looking for in a new rector. So I, I suppose we can entertain some questions or... Uh, hey Tom, before you do, uh, we know time, we set an hour, and as I was just reminded of it, and the choir has to leave at 7, at seven o'clock, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So, um, th uh, as Tom said, this is kind of the the guts of how the profile is prepared based on just what we just did. And these are some of the issues that came up that we can discuss further, but for those who want to, uh, must or should go to choir practice, uh, we'll just continue on. Um, we have a bunch of chairs. We have some of the chairs of the choir, we'll have to choir. return to the choir room. <laughs> and need two chairs. I think it's just the chair. We didn't use any other chairs. Yeah. So, choir chairs. So, uh, maybe we'll entertain a few questions, uh, and then, uh, time permitting, we'll have a look at issues. Issues. Yes, Lucinda. There was one quality that you didn't address, and that was the third one. Open-minded and inclusive. I just wondered if there was a slide that got overlooked. It got overlooked. You know what? Because the reason it got overlooked, well, we didn't ask you specifically what we did do, what we did do, at the end of the questionnaire, we said, are there any issues, and this is my fault, I put this thing together, so I, I left it out, but we did ask, are there any issues that would cause you to leave St. Paul's uh, when we hire a new rector? And I would say 90% of the responses said, I would leave if, if, if you uh, got somebody into here who refused to be open to a lot of what are potentially controversial issues uh, in the Episcopal Church. This church, St. Paul's Parish, is, I would say, a very liberal um, parish. Um, 
And uh, the overwhelming response of people was that they don't want somebody who's going to come in here and be dogmatic about one thing or another. Uh, and I think it was primarily based on the responses to that question that prompted us to, to put that into the survey. It's my, uh, my oversight, I'm sorry, I should have put some of that in. But we don't have any statistical data. Got a question? Um, I just wanted to make the observation that although music didn't make it on the list, because we have such a strong lay minister leading the music, and more than one, in fact, I'm looking at Lois, it's covered. I, 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 I couldn't agree more, and I suspect that that's, I suspect that that's her, her comment was that music is already done very well uh, by lay minister. Uh, you don't need a rector whose who's music is number, number one thing. Uh, it's one of those things I think we already do very well, and I think people thought, well, in terms of getting a new rector, it's not the most critical issue. We do a very good job of music here. Thank you. Myrna. I, I just want to point out something that um, the goals and the new rectors, the, the, the um, uh, aspects of the new rector uh, that we, the, we hope um, he or she will buy came from the survey, yes, but also from the forums and the conversations, um, individual conversations, discussions with the small group. So, um, so we did. Did everybody hear that? I think it's a very good point. Uh, I, my focus is on the survey, but Myrna is quite correct in pointing out that the qualities that we're looking for in a rector didn't just come from the survey. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, Sarah? Well, um, you seem to disparage the number one on the survey teaching 67%. Um, I'm sorry if I sounded like I'm disparaging it. It's partly my, my personality and delivery style. Uh, preaching with clarity is one of those top things that we're looking for. You know, yeah, you've got to be able to preach with clarity uh, and relate the gospel to our daily life.